Hi, Blood Talk fans. We are going to continue with urine analysis. Today, focus will be on the chemical part of the urine analysis. It is the main part of the test and is sometimes referred to as urine dipstick test or just dipstick test. It is really interesting how much a thin plastic stick containing various paths of chemicals can tell us about our health. Without further ado, let us get into it. The chemical portions of the urine analysis test is the bulk of this test. A dipstick test is a common term used to refer to the chemical portions of urine analysis. This is a reference to the actions of submerging a testing strip into a urine sample. The testing strip has chemical paths on it, which is where the reactions take place. The test results are determined by the color changes of these paths. A standard urine test strip has up to 10 different chemical paths which change colors once it comes in contact with liquid or urine in this case. This is what the individual strip looks like and the color chart on the bottle is what we use to compare the color changes to. After we dip the testing strip into the sample, the chemical reaction starts and the indicator of each path will change to indicate the presence, absence, and semi-qualitative on each of these 10 tests. Another thing to keep in mind is that once the strip comes into contact with urine, the reaction starts and each reaction has to read at a certain time. If you read the reactions too early or too late, the result will not be accurate. Now that the general information is out of the way, we can go over each reaction in a little bit more detail. So for each test, I will cover health issues that are associated with it, chemical reactions, reagent used, and what can cause fault positive and fault negative for each of these tests. We will go in the order that we have to read the reactions, but keep in mind that the order may vary a little depending on which manufacturer you use. Glucose. Glucose in urine is called glycourea or glucourea, which indicate high glucose level in your bloodstream. This is usually due to diabetes, but can also be from other acute illness. The glucose path should be read between 30 seconds to 60 seconds, depending on the manufacturer. The results report range from negative to 2000 microliter per deciliter. The color change range from blue to brown. Here is the reactions and reagents. What can give false positive test results? Contaminations from strong oxidizing cleaning reagents like peroxide and hypochlorite. And what can give false negative test results? Temperature has effect on MSI reactivity, so it is indirectly affect the test. If the specific gravity decreases, the sensitivity of glucose oxidase also decreases. Alkali urine also decreases sensitivity for glucose. Another thing that affects is the high level of vitamin C. The high level of vitamin C can inhibit the enzymatic reaction. Bilirubin. A small amount of bilirubin in urine is normal. However, an increased amount could indicate some serious health issue, include hepatitis, liver disease, gallstone, hemolysis, and constipation. Bilirubin is light sensitive, so the urine should be tested as soon as possible and protect from light after collection. The path for the urine test reads between 30 seconds to 60 seconds after dipping. The chemical path color changes from light yellow to tan. These colors corresponded to the level of bilirubin from negative to large amount of bilirubin. And here is the reactions and reagent. What can give false positive test results? First, if the reaction is read after manufacture indication. Second, some medications can interfere with this test. And what can give false negative test results? First, a large amount of ascorbic acid. Second, if the urine has left for too long before the test is performed, the bilirubin will oxidize as specimen exposed to light at room temperature. 
ketones. Ketones in the urine indicating excessive fat breakdown for energy. This often occur in diabetic, starvation, or low carb diet. A normal amount of ketone in blood is between two to four milligram per deciliter. Ketones results are read at around 40 second. The color changes from buff pink to maroon color. The reaction is reported as negative, trace, moderate, or large, or can be reported from negative to 160 mg per deciliter. And here is the reactions and reagents for this test. For false positive and false negative test results, if the urine is pigmented or have high specific gravity and low pH, these can cause false positive test results. And for the false negative test results, if the urine is contaminated with acetone, the acetone can give a false negative test results. Specific gravity. We have talked about specific gravity before in the physical part of urine analysis. It is because there are two ways to do specific gravity tests. One way is to manually perform this test and another way is as a part of the dipstick. Specific gravity tells us how dilute or concentrate the urine is, giving a decent indicator of hydration status. Low specific gravity often indicate renal failure or diabetic insipidus, whereas high specific gravity indicates dehydration. The reactions for specific gravity should be read at 45 seconds. The reagent path contain a pH indicator. The indicator that is for specific gravity is actually measuring the pH that is changed as the urine increase or decrease its specific gravity. Blood. The urine dipstick is sensitive for hemoglobin, but it is also able to detect myoglobin. The presence of hemoglobin in urine is called hemoglobin urea. The presence of myoglobin in urine is called myoglobin urea. Conditions that can cause the presence of blood in urine may be UTI, kidney damage, high alkaline, or vagina contaminations. Blood reactions are read at 60 seconds. Intact red blood cell gives green spots on yellow or orange background, whereas free hemoglobin or myoglobin will greet uniform yellow to green to dark blue color. The results are reported as trace or moderate of intact red blood cells or trace 2, 3 plus amongst hemoglobin. And here is the reactions and reagents for this test. Now let's talk about false positive and false negative. For false positive, contamination with oxidizing reagents like hypochlorite and menstrual blood can cause false positive test results. As for the false negative test results, a high level of ascorbic acid can give a false negative result, as well as not missing the sample thoroughly before the test can also give a false negative because the RBC is heavy and it could settle down at the bottom of the specimen cup. pH The pH of normal urine is between 4.5 to 8 with an average of 6. There are two main reasons for knowing urine pH. One is for diagnostic and therapeutic purposes. Since the kidney is one of the two organs that regulate acid and base in our body. Another is to help with crystal formation identification found during microscopic part of the urine analysis. Your kidneys vary the urine pH to compensate for your diet and metabolism. Your diets can influence by acidity of the urine. Protein-rich diet tends to produce acid urine, while vegetable-based diet tend to produce alkali urine. The chemical paths indicate pH by using two different indicators. One indicator will change from orange to yellow when the urine pH is 5 to 6.5. Another indicator will change from green to blue when the urine pH is between 7 to 8.5. Proteins. The urine dipstick's protein is more sensitive for albumins than other type of proteins. 
if protein is present in large quantities, the surface tensions of urine will be altered. So if you agitate the urine, it will cause the foam to develop on the surface of the urine. Protein in urine can be transient or indicate an underlying renal disease. Here are some medical conditions that we can see the presence of protein in the urine. The protein path is read at 60 seconds after dipping in the urine. This is a colorimetric method used in dipstick based on the concept known as protein error of indicators. The indicator changed from yellow to green in presence of urine. The results can be reported as negative to 4 plus or negative to 2000 milligrams per deciliter according to the color change. There are a few things that can cause false positive test results for protein. First, alkali urine. And second is if you leave the dipstick in the urine for too long because of the buffer that's on the pad will get washed out. There are a few reasons to cause a false negative test results for the proteins. The first one is if the urine is too diluted. The second is if there are other protein presence in the urine besides albumin. Like I said, the pad is more sensitive for the albumin. Urobirinogen. Screening for urobirinogen is useful for liver function disorders. One of the issues in measuring urobirinogen is its instability. The urobirinogen is converted to urobilin on standing in the presence of oxygen and on exposure to air. One unique thing about urobirinogen level is it peaks between 2 to 4 p.m. Urobirinogen results can be read at 60 seconds and here is the reactions and reagents for this test. Some medications can cause false positive test results and a high level of nitrate and the presence of formalin can give a false negative test results for urobirinogen test. Nitrate. Nitrate is used for early detections and asymptomatic bacteriuria. Here are some common organisms that can cause urinary tract infections. The best specimen of choice for suspicions of UTI is the first morning urine because it is the most concentrated one. Nitrate test results are read at 60 seconds, may vary a little bit depending on the manufacturer. If the path changed to pink color, it decayed a positive test. And here is the reactions and reagents for this test. For false positive test results, if the urine is left for too long at room temperature before test is performed, this can give false positive test results because during the time that specimen is waiting for testing, microorganisms can grow in the specimens and generate nitrate. A red urine can also give a false positive test result as well. For false negative test results, high specific gravity and high level of ascorbic acid can give false negative test results. There are some facts that need to be cautious about in interpreting nitrate test results. A negative test result should not be interpreted as no bacteria infections. You may think, why is that the case? Here are some reasons. First, there are many bacteria that produce nitrate, but there are also many bacteria that do not produce nitrate. Second, urine may not remain in the bladder for long enough before the specimen was collected. The urine that remains in the bladder for 4 hours or more is the better specimen and a high level of urobilinogen. Another thing to keep in mind is this dipstick is not a replacement for bacteria microscopy which we will talk more about it in the next video. Leukocyte history An increased number of white blood cells is one indicator of urinary tract infections. Usually, for a UTI, you will also have an increase in white blood cells, elevated pH, protein, and nitrate. The most common white blood cells seen in urine sample is the neutrophil. The neutrophils contain enzymes known as esterase. These esterase is what is used to detect the presence of white blood cells. That's why the test called leukocyte esterase. 
here is the reactions and reagents for this test. After dipping the urine dipstick in the urine sample, leucoesterate results are read at 2 minutes. A positive reaction produce a lavender to purple color. The results are reported as negative to 3 plus. There are a few things that can cause false positive test results. A strong oxidizing reagent, vaginal discharge, preservatives like formalin, false negative, high specific gravity, and content glucose and proteins. The reason that these can cause false negative results because in the presence of glucose and protein, they will increase the specific gravity of the urine, and when all those conditions are met, the white blood cells will crater and cannot release the esterase. And since the test is measure the esterate that released by white blood cells, if the white blood cells cannot release the esterate, so the chemical that is on the pad won't be able to detect the presence of white blood cells. Thank you for staying with me until the end. What do you want to know next? Do you want to know more about blood bank? Chemistry? Microbiology? If you have any burning questions, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. Lastly, if you have not done so, please like, share, subscribe, and click the notification bell. I will see you in the next episode of Blood Talks. And as always, remember, your blood tells you the story of your health. Thanks for watching. Bye.